Even yogis like me have raging tempers. Or even if you don't have a temper, you're still gonna have to have hard conversations every now and then. There's things to work out with people that you care for and you love, and you don't wanna end up screaming in their face or wrecking the relationship because you approach it in the wrong way. After years of pouting and slamming doors and ending up crying and miserable, this is what I've learned about how to fight like a yogi. First, acknowledge that it's totally normal to have emotions come up in a conversation. When we go into an environment where we feel afraid or vulnerable or nervous, the body goes through a very natural process of making us flush, flustered, maybe we freeze, maybe we get a little shaky, we may start crying. That's all really a normal symptom of the body having a reaction to a tense environment or feeling a little vulnerable. The best thing you can do during that is just to talk through it and actually name the emotions, just like we would ask a kid to. So say, I'm feeling really flushed right now, or I'm feeling really angry, or I feel nervous. Say those things. I'm feeling afraid. I'm feeling really hot in the face. I'm feeling like I'm gonna cry. It's okay to just say those things. It's better to let them out and to acknowledge them and recognize that the body's having a process than to hold that in and try to manage all of that internal world happening while you're trying to have an external connection. There's really five steps to fighting like a yogi. And the first one is when you go into that conversation, connect. So start by taking a moment, I don't care how angry you are. Of course, unless there's a physical threat to your safety, connect. So you can stand, you can sit, place your hand on the heart, opposite hand on the heart. That's one really beautiful way to do it. You can sit or stand back to back and feel each other breathe through your bodies. You can sit cross-legged with the knees touching in place, one hand on top and the other hand below, and then switch so one person has a hand below and one person has a hand on top. You could also hug and just stay in that hug for a full minute. All of these positions we really want to hold for a minute so we get past that uncomfortable stage to a place where the nervous system calms down and we feel really connected to the other person as a being, as a living, breathing human. Once you're in that space of intimacy and connection, the next thing you do is name your assumptions and fears. So we all go into conversations thinking, I wanna know this and I wanna know this and I'm really mad at you about that, but behind all of that is something else. Behind all of it is the real motivation of the conversation, which is, I'm afraid you don't like me anymore. I'm afraid you're gonna leave me. I'm afraid that this means that we're falling apart. I'm afraid and have the assumption that you think this, this, and this. And I think that that means this, this, and this. So name those assumptions. Go into a conversation and say, hey, I'm assuming that you're not as invested in this as me, and that means I'm afraid that this is over. Is that true? Or you don't even have to ask if it's true. You can just name your fears and your assumptions. That's an incredibly vulnerable thing to do. And this is what the difference is between fighting like a normal person and fighting like a yogi. Yogis stand up for that. We acknowledge what's happening in ourselves and we have the ability to stand in that and say, I am going to expose myself. I am going to show you this deep inner side of me because I know that's the way through this. Just like we sit in meditation and all that crap comes up in our head and we sit through it. We know that that's the way to where we wanna be on the other side of all of this stuff happening. The third thing that you do in a conversation when you want to fight like a yogi is ask the other person for exactly what you want. So you say in terms of you, I would feel, insert whatever, safer, calmer, happier, more loving, better, insert whatever you want. I would feel this way if you did this. Is that something you're willing to do? And that's the most important part. Is that something you're willing to do? Put it on the other person because you really need to know if they're doing it because they want to, because they feel for how you want to feel. They want you to feel safe. They want you to feel happy. They want you to feel content and loved and peaceful and beautiful and all of those things. Or maybe it's not something that they're willing to do. And then they can answer you honestly and say, no, that's not what I'm willing to do, but I would consider doing this. Or I am willing to do this. Or I want you to feel those ways, but doing that triggers me in this way. And so how about we try this instead? It gives you a space for conversation because you've made it about how you want to feel and ask them for a specific action that they can respond to, yes, no, or let's consider this. The next step is to summarize. So at the end of your conversation, you've both talked, you've both shared your assumptions and fears, you've both shared what you want, and then at the end you say, I understand that we just discussed 
this, I understand that you feel this way. I understand that we came to this agreement and that you're willing to do this and I'm willing to do this to help you feel how you want to feel and you can help me about how I want to feel. And you just wrap it up, make sure, is that correct? Are we both on the same page? Do we both understand each other? And here's the most important part. The fifth and final step is to end by connecting again. And one of my favorite ways of connecting is the heart hug. Most of us, when we go to hug people, we lean over on the left and we go like this. But that's actually connecting sort of your spleen to your spleen and that processes toxins. We don't want to do that. So hug them on the right. We want to connect heart to heart, connect all the way through the body and allow that energy to move through the two of you and hold it for 60 seconds. I know that's uncomfortable. I know it's awkward, but really hold that position for that long because after 30 seconds, 45 seconds, the shoulders come down, the tension goes off, we soften, we feel into the other person's breath and combined the two of you relax together and you really seal in all of that intention. Next time you're faced with a tense situation and you want to move through it in a compassionate and empathetic way for both yourself and the person involved, Try this system, the five steps. Again, they're connect, name your assumptions and fears, ask for what you want based in terms of how you want to feel, summarize it up, and then reconnect again. Remember, be free, be brave, be you.